Okay. So assuming Shell does not have any spiders currently inhabiting her shirt, I think we're good to go. Mm, I've had two bugs crawl on me in the last two days. It's weird. I think it's because the couch is too close to the window. That or they're fleeing the outdoors. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we were... This one. Sorry I've been quiet. Time with you has been healing. Can you come by my old office, Brooks Associates? My father has officially taken over and I want to confront him once and for all. Sure. I can do this. I mean, we can do this. Oh. Not that any of this matters. Oh, wait. Eh. There was a cursor on the screen. And you uh, couldn't control it with only your... a little bit. I wanted to specifically turn off my standing mic. Um... Because I've been recording with it this whole week. And I need to click back in the game. No? Oh, I see. It's I just didn't have to press anything else. There we go. This has been... Well, well, wait, 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 what are you doing? Why aren't you reading all of the text messages? I... Let's just start with Isaac. He is literally the closest character... Uh, the character we're closest to. I guess we can, we can do Valeria, too. Well, I was just wanting to read what they all had to say before we go out. Uh, I want to alternate it. I'm so t tired of this, like, just sit here and read text for, like, half an hour thing. I, I want to start alternating things better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tavering's we fun, but not as fun as... What? We've been dating her this entire time. Yeah. Like, it, it wasn't as overt as, say, Sunder, who's like, I want you. Mm -hmm. But very much like we are romantically entangled with Valeria as well. Shell's been struggling with this for those of you at home. She is not at all... Uh, she's not particularly polysympathetic when it comes to, like, us in video games. That, like, the idea of us romancing multiple characters is really uncomfortable for her. And I, I have just solidified this in my head as... We're just playing The Bachelor, but with swords and stabbing. And, uh... like, the funny thing is, Shell watched The Bachelor and Bachelorette and knows more, way more about e well, either I, and Well, I both. watched it for years because my mother liked it, and it was really uncomfortable seeing, you know, upwards of ten guys or girls vying for the attention oh, yeah. of one person. And they would go on the group dates and the single dates, and half the show was them showing everyone else back at the hotel or the spa or wherever they were staying, just talking to one another and going, uh, you know, I hate the fact that so-and-so is getting a one-on-one -on -one date with the person that we all love. And they would... But it's like they were ha catty half of those and, characters truly are huh? paid actors. I was reading mm -hmm. about one... Uh, well, a lot of pe I always assumed that a lot of people were going on that specifically so that they would get attention. Yeah. And that well, maybe I mean, the whole the whole or... show to begin with is just narcissism, narcissism embodied. Um, mm -hmm. And so I d they're empty people that just want to well, look famous for the, a while. The other thing too is imagine dating in a situation where you're essentially on an endless vacation. I mean, that's kind of what our main character is doing now. Yeah. But imagine people dating in real life where they have work, they have family issues, they have personal things that they're working through. You know, it's not all sun and wine and amazing trips around the world. And do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So I, I think, especially with The Bachelor and The Bachelorette, that it... The reason why half of those relationships don't even last past the season finale... Well, it's because they're not properly founded on anything apart from just vanity. Mm-hmm. I'm really disappointed this clothing store never had anything more than just these things. Though, what's weird is I think there were one or two instances in which... It was like the final rose where they have to choose between the last two people... And they end up with one or the other, or sometimes neither. It depends. But I think there's been one or two instances where they chose one person, broke up with them, and ended up going back with the other one. Yeah. And things I mean, like that. it's like structured enforced dating. It's not like the person can... Like, they are contractually obligated to make a decision at the end. 
and have to work with like writers and directors and producers and so like that kind of pressure is not going to result in a good romance and then they have awkward interviews on talk shows yep. for months afterwards one way or another though i i will once again say we were effectively playing the Bachelor Bachelorette, but with swords. Right, right, right. But okay, with Isaac, we're confronting his father because yes. his father has forcibly taken I, over oh, the company. Oh. Ah. I truly do not believe that this is nearly as steamy as you think it is. Okay, well, with Valeria, Valeria is going for steamy with the whole kissing bit. Little Isaac, bit. Isaac has some more left yeah. to his story that involves his father. I still think he wants in our... I was going to try and make some kind of sword pun the closest i got was sheath but that was a little <laughs> that was a little too forward you meet isaac outside brooks associates and knock on the door you can't go in yet there oh, sorry can't i wait he he becomes a really yeah, he just transforms is he Come threatening in. her wait wait that's me i was no no question mark question mark question mark oh yep. well, that was her no 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 no? The assistant was called Christy or whatever. It was question mark, question mark, question mark, come in. It's the father saying that we can come in. <gasps> oh, really? Yes. Oh, the question mark, question yeah. mark, question You're mark. You're too wrapped up in other things. Sorry, I'm distracted. The assistant shrugs and gets out of the way. <sighs> there goes. Can I really do this? I'm with you. Thanks. You hold his elbow and go inside together. Oh, man. Mr. Brooks, I don't believe you have an appointment. Your assistant wouldn't make me one. Why would she? Apparently, I'm not your father anymore, so you're nobody to me. <laughs> Worse than nobody, you're just a failure I've replaced. <gasps> replaced? With whom? Just gonna say nothing for this one. Yeah. We're support. We're not here to fight the battle. Mm -hmm. Isaac gives you a grateful look and squeezes your hand. But why are you doing this, Vincent? Why replace me at all? Even if you wanted to spite me, you must hate this. You always said jobs were for people who paid uh. taxes. Yes, yes, but you were making such a mess, I had to step in. My name was already on the door. This is a new loan, but I only came here to tell you face to face, uh, tell you to your face that I don't yes. care. It's your company and I don't mind. All of my money is going to charity anyway. It was a mistake to think I could help people with venture capital. Good. I'm so very glad you're happy. I'm selling off this dunge nonsense, by the way. Some Silicon Valley nutjob can have it. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Do they own the mall? No, 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 What's no. What's the dunge business? I, I think he, he was... Uh, he was selling off... Like, they were doing training and some other things. Uh, hmm. Maybe. Were they, were they... I don't know. Unfortunately, I... One thing I keep running into the, with this game is that I wish it was twice to three times deeper. And, like, way more backstory on the characters. Slightly more inter interconnected plots between everybody. A villain that is more than just shows up to be creepy and stalkerish. Mm -hmm. But actually is working against you at times. Um, And, like, more development on the world. Like, it's really good. But kind of like Lucifer within us, it, a lot of the... I want to know more! Yeah, a lot of the quality is is there, but it's it's very surface level. Even Moon Hunters, I think, kind of suffered from this. And Shattered Planets. I, I think I said this last time, but it was... Or Shattered Planet. Very much, all of these games have so much promise. I mean, they have wonderful world building and visuals, definitely. Yeah. And music, and even the gameplay, it's just... I feel like I'm skimming the surface of something so much greater that isn't there, and it's like, no, but... I think that's always a complicated thing a with, more. with especially indie games, is how long and how expansive can you make it before yeah. there's the risk of and, not and breaking so even. I, I don't think I'm going to disagree with their choice on this one. I'm just saying it's kind of unfortunate, because it could, it could be... DLC? Uh, I don't... I mean, DLC is just going <laughs> to add People that do character. add that, though. Realistically, when it comes down to it, they would have had to just made the game so much deeper from the outset, and that expanding upon it would take a lot of effort, and so I'm not going to complain too much. Okay, well... It's, it... it's just one of those that, like, I can feel the potential every time I'm, I play any of their games, and I want just that, that much more. 
Whereas, like, a lot of other games, I'm pretty satisfied with how it, you know, turned out. Uh, I don't know, other game off the top of my head. Nefarious. Game that we both adored. I don't feel like it could have gone that much deeper mm-hmm. at the time. But, like... I don't know. I just... There's such interesting ideas here, or such, you know, actually kind of nice characters that I want to know more about. I didn't get a grand total of, what, seven conversations with each of them? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Plus text messages. In any case, I I didn't know that their business was affiliated with the dungeons. Yeah, they didn't explain that well enough. I knew he was a fencing instructor and he was doing venture capital, but that was about it. I don't think he owns the the dungeon. I think it was more like support network for dungeon crawlers. I thought he said he was selling off the dungeon assets. Well, well the dungeon business. The dungeon business. Yeah, it was kind of vague. Well, we'll see. We'll be investing in solid timeless mm. products. Computer, oh, computers, uh, coasters, pens, staplers. Are those things you can just see on your desk right now? <laughs> no, I don't even own a stapler. Ha! I haven't seen a stapler in years. They must be in hot demand. I should double my investment. <sighs> you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm going to have a fulfilling life with Dude and help people as best right. as I can. When you want to be a part of it, you can treat me with respect. And you can treat me with respect. Let me know. So squeeze there's squeeze Isaac's hands, glare the other, to Vincent. The other ones. The, whole, just, the spit is disgusting. Yeah. Why would you do that? The, these would make Isaac mad. Mm-hmm. But we haven't actually finished with him. It's such a shame because I l- cannot use him well in combat. I kind of can. You turn and leave Isaac? together. Wait one second. I won't have you thinking this is all about you. Taking over my firm isn't about me. Well. Father and son stare at each other in silence for a moment. Very well, I suppose it is. A little bit. I thought having a son would give me an ally, a representative. Instead, I find you intending to give away everything and ruin the Brooks' legacy. (sighs) Vincent, I appreciate the time and care you and Mom put into raising me, but... He always said you wanted to trust me to make my own decisions. Why are you so surprised? (laughs) I said that because I thought you would make the right decisions, obviously. But at least I found one competent person, at least. Christine, get in here. Uh, I really hate the fact that he is doing the whole uh, parent thing where they just want their children to be an extension of themselves (laughs) and to... I was playing Psychonauts last night. Uh Uh-huh. And uh, I... Short... It short vignette effectively you're in a in a casino room you've effectively tricked this lady into thinking that uh risk equals money which makes her heavily addicted to gambling yeah but she used to be a nurse which involved some amount of like childbirth stuff mm-hmm. uh and so she rewrote the maternity ward into a maternity roulette wheel and so people would roll the roulette wheel and if to they... see what kind of baby they got yeah and so well no you had to like win to get the baby and so there's this very rich couple that's betting all they have because they have so much you know it's implied that they are bezos levels of rich mm-hmm. and they're just throwing money at this but the roulette wheel is wi- rigged Mm-hmm. And so you have to unrig the wheel to get them a baby, so you, then they just give you a bunch of money for the baby. You know, cut out the middleman, I guess. Okay. And then afterwards, they're like, I can't wait wait to use you uh, for, like, tax evasion. I can't wait to f- voice all of our unfulfilled aspirations onto you. And just, like, this whole list of exactly this right now. Mm-hmm. But I just... I... I'm, I'm so curious about this, with the whole idea of parents foisting their expectations and like i mean back in the old days parents were in a way forced to use their kids not only for labor and the family business but also to take care of them when they're old yeah i mean depending on where you are that's still very valid and Mm -hmm. also how much money you have and a bunch of other things like multi-generational families are still very common in the u.s Mm mm-hmm Oh. And, uh, and in the case of businesses, I you know, people would probably prefer to hand over their business to 
a relative or a, a child of theirs rather than an associate or yeah someone else but the i i don't know i always get weird whiplash with this because i think my parents were always a little laissez-faire with me um i think mainly just because they both defy it heavily defied their own parents expectations mm. <laughs> so i didn't find out my parents were like weren't actually that cool with my future plans <laughs> until like after the fact and it was like a recurring thing too because like the day I went full, well, it was like a couple of days before I went full time on YouTube. My mother was like, so when are you going to quit YouTube? And I'm like, no, no, you don't realize, like, I almost have enough money to move out with this. I don't know. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Is there a problem? I'm going public with the news. Welcome to the family, Miss Brooks. Oh? Wait. What? He's adopting her? Christine is my daughter, at least as far as the inheritance is concerned. Isaac. The Brooks legacy can't be allowed to sink into the mud. Sorry, Isaac. I'm sure you understand. Mm -mm. I'm not sure I do. How could I say no? Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. Vincent clears his throat. Isaac leaves without a word. You both should be ashamed. Oh, no, you don't. Mr. Brooks doesn't have time for you today. Or any day. The door slams firmly behind you. You don't see Isaac anywhere in the office. You find him outside, seemingly enjoying the sunshine. Well, hello. well I'm free. How should we celebrate? Free? Sorry, that's probably the wrong word. I'll be sad later, I'm <sighs> sure. But I'll mostly be sad thinking of what my father and I could have had. What I wanted us to have. As for the money, I wanted it to go to charity, but I'm afraid that's out of my hands <sighs> now. Right now, in this moment, realizing I owe nothing to the man is a relief. Well, not just relief. Also an emptiness, I confess. I'd rather not be alone tonight. Yeah, you don't have to be alone. All aboard the Isaac train! I will kiss the emptiness what? away. That is such a weird thing to say. And we're saying it. What? Why not? Really? I stare at the void and I make smooching noises. For goodness sake, Wander. <laughs> huh. That's not how therapy works, but I'm willing to try. You share a slow, sunlit kiss. So, want to come to my place? You might have other lovers, but you're all I want. He takes your hand, thumb gently pressed over yours. <sighs> Feeling your warmth beside me, breathing your scent? I mean, I don't want to push you if you're uncomfortable. Or we could just find a restaurant instead. Where do you want to go? Uh, restaurant. We barely, I mean, we yes, we know him and we've been helping him through his daddy issues. But Wander, please. You know that all that's going to happen is, this is probably the sixth relationship mark. No, he's, we're only level five. Oh. Yeah. Wander, we we haven't really hung out with him aside from what the the church and where else have okay a couple fencing <laughs> lessons the dungeon. Years ago, her friends thanked me for corrupting her slightly, so she'd be more normal. What do you mean by it continues normal? Normal doesn't mean you have to be okay with smooching like, your significant like other completely amorous well mm. this was just awkward it is so awkward wait uh isaac leads you home she's Morning. been trying to get me to play dating sims but it's a forever mess. but the time that we finally hit the point that i've been not wanting to visit she chickens out and i'm all in <laughs> Okay, the only reason why I liked the idea of not this, okay, the dating sim that I had originally wanted us to play was kind of cutesy and about a knight that was trying to save a bunch of princes. Yeah. yeah. Frankly, I have no interest in dating sims, and apart from the Horatio one, I think I will the Horatio. generally stay okay. away from them. Okay. Well, it's just Boyfriend Dungeon was made by one of my favorite devs, so it's kind of like, yeah, mm -hmm. I gotta do this. Okay, well, in any case, it's a mess. 
You share a bottle of wine and enjoy each other's company in the master bedroom. He's disciplined and seems to delight in take, taking his time with every patient affection, adoring your body. Eventually, you drift off to sleep. Oh, so this is his apartment. Doesn't look like a mess at all. It's a mess for him. Look at it. It's in shambles. In the morning, you wake up and he's already dressed. I have a fencing class to get to. It can't be late. I know we didn't talk about my father much, but... You were still a great comfort to me. Thank you for the wonderful evening. You kiss Isaac goodbye and eventually head home. Hooray! Hmm. I don't think emojis are appropriate here. I'd rather focus on your our lovely evening. You snore. You snore. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you do too, actually, so we're even. What a summer it's been. And it all started in the dunge. I'd like to talk with you again about things that matter. Can you meet me at the mission one more time? Sure. Thanks. Okay, are we going to read any of the other texts? Nope. Let's finish Isaac out first. Well, look, both characters are at the mission, apparently. Oh, sweet. Double date. Sup, Isaac? You find Isaac alone in the sanctuary. I just wanted to help people. I thought I could work within the system to help people and impress my father. Some part of me thought being a good sword would impress him, too. Even one kind word would have helped so much. Dang, I wish this game was fully voice acted. That is a good voice actor. Mm -hmm. Or at least good voice. I have no idea if they actually no do normally normal voice acting or if this is just what they sound out. Wait, what do you mean? Well, like, you know Matt Mercer? They just hire Matt Mercer to just be Matt Mercer in every video game forever and it's fine. <laughs> and so, like, this guy has a great voice and it's like, I, I enjoy having voice acting opportunities. But at the same time, like, boy, it would have been nice to actually listen to that the entire game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, but you well, helped me uh, see how much I depend on Vincent emotionally. Sorry. I was just about to make a comment about working within the system to try to do charitable things. Unfortunately, with so many businesses, it seems that it's not worth it. Well, the that corrupt any assholes rise to the top and anybody that's actually going into things with good intentions is either stomped not, down or thrown away. They're not ruthless enough. Yeah. Which I, is, it's just, it is sad that that's how the yeah, cookie crumbles. Like, my dad does uh, medicine research, I guess, at this point, for the government uh, looking for treatments. There's a lot of biometrics and other things, too. Yeah, but so he's been coordinating a lot of uh, long COVID treatments. Yeah. Um, and he was talking about specifically finding a combination of drugs that should not be like combined together mm. um and actively warning people you know that he was kind of working with and working for saying like hey you know we don't have all the data yet but it seems like if you combine this this and this these three things together trying to treat covid it's gonna kill people and you know he very much is a work within the system kind of person he, you know, put in all of the official warnings he possibly could, and then when it came down to it, it's just like... People wanted to profit from that combination. Yeah, they wanted the the fame of, we found this miracle, miracle cure kind of thing. And, like, I, I'm sure it's a little over-embellished, but it's very much kind of one of those where it's like, he he had all of the information and they just ignored him for profit. And I, I know some people are very much being hung out to dry as part of this. And it's just kind of like, uh, I don't, I wanted to tell, tell him at the moment, it's like, you really should have gone over people's heads somehow, but. It, it's difficult in the science world. Yeah, because, very difficult. Because I, grants, because. Well, yeah, my, my dad has been screwed over in this manner far more times than I think he'd care to admit. Because he plays fair and a lot of people don't. Mm -mm. And I hate I hate that our society glorifies that. And doesn't properly punish people when they get caught. You know, oh, you stole $10 million. Well, that'll be a $5 million fine. What the hell? Well, and the other thing, too, is 
even when they do catch people doing something heinous, if they have become so profitable because of their illicit activities, then yeah, just like you said, yeah. it, they can just shrug off like the whatever 2008 fines market and things. crash. A couple people went to prison for that, but none of the people responsible. Definitely none of the people that profited off of it. Mm -hmm. Like, ugh. Anyway. But in any case, people with good intentions, it, it's, it is You difficult. gotta fight hard. And sometimes the system, you gotta fight that too. Mm -hmm. Sharp dresser. Wow, these are completely useless. Oh well. And how much I didn't need to. I could become more independent and be myself. I adore you. As you eh. wielded my blade, I, I fell in love. <laughs> this is the guy that we took on the hour-long tutorial adventure where he was having a mental crisis. <laughs> we haven't known each other for very long, but you're already an important part of my life. I actually feel guilty now. Like, we Stockholm syndromed this guy. We did a little well, bit. Well, the thing is, aren't the majority of the characters going through issues that... Yeah, but like... My headcanon is still that he was somewhat traumatized by that first episode. Mm. I, I realize that, like, the game's never going to recognize what the heck I did there. <laughs> but, like, imagine you're like, okay, I can become a sword. Let's just do, like, a little bit to learn the ropes. And we just go on, like, carve a bloody swath through the entire dungeon. Uh, you know, like, we were beating the poor guy well, against no, enemies no, 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 that no, no, were no, so no. What it hard. was, was he was told by your cousin that you were a newbie and were going into the dungeon for the first time, show him the ropes. And... Yeah, but like, I was hitting enemies where he was doing no damage against them. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, partly means that I was weak, but maybe he was not great either. Like, imagine taking a sword and but beating every... a rock wall with it a Every bunch. character starts at level zero, one. But he was the one that I abused so thoroughly. Eh. And my, my point is just that, like, we took this guy for an absolute ride on the first episode and now he loves us dearly and like i can't help but feel a little guilty mm. anyway i guess i trust your opinion more than anyone else's at this point oh and there it goes i mean i've tried beating investors at their own game and that doesn't work so what's the best way for us to use what time and money i have left to help me fix income equality inequality mm, so there's local activism political influence educate the masses Dem hmm, this all is of these can be good this is a tough one so local activism that's great to it fix things in a li in a limited scope but the problem but is sometimes the limited scope can have a ton of impact mm -hmm. um take stacy abrams in like north carolina Mm -hmm. She is lauded at least in, or no, not North Carolina, sorry, Georgia. It was Georgia. Yeah, she was the one got, that got screwed over for governorship by uh, really corrupt politics. And instead of just rolling over, she went on like crazy voter uh, registration drives and really got people actually motivated to start voting. Mm -hmm. Local when, activism when, can work really when, well. But wouldn't that fall under political influence? No. Or, uh... No, political influence would be like, you know, getting, like, actually running for office or becoming tied to a politician as some kind of influence or backer. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see, who would be a good example of that? Uh, Robert Reich or whatever? Yeah. He started with political influence. You know, he was never actually, like, in politics. What do you mean? He, he became... But he never ran for a position. Oh. Uh. He, but he got a political position. And he was very... I'm not going to say private about it, but the man was not running for any kind of candidacy. I don't think he had... I, I'm not going to say he didn't have a business background. He did. I mean, now he's a professor. Yeah. But... but so he started with the political influence, and then he switched to educate the masses. But at the time when he was the... Uh, a lot of people are starting to do educate the masses. And I think that's where I'm at, too. That local activism can be good, but I feel like the more people know and understand, 
the better it is. Like, straight up, uh, trans, or even non-binary, or intersex, or like a ton of those things. How many of those did we even know about when I mean, we were a kid? When we were kids, back then, those topics were taboo. Yeah, they and were. The, I mean, those, I suppose I shouldn't say topics so much as it was taboo to talk about I mean, people in I, those circumstances. I Mild disclosure, I, I definitely remember as kids kind of doing the like, haha, you know, so-and-so might be gay. And, you know, that kind of like the schoolyard like, oh... Maybe they're gay. And I have to say, as far as the people that I uh, I did make the wild schoolyard guesses about, I was completely correct. But it was not really cool of me to do so. And I kind of regret that because it's like, that was not a good thing for me to have done. But it was also like 2002. And so everybody did it because it was normal. Nobody realized it was offensive or rude or hurtful. And so, over the last 20 years, like, homosexuality went from kind of this weird fringe thing that some people were, but nobody understood, to, like, I've got a lot of gay friends. I've got a lot of bi friends, and... And relatives. And relatives. Mm-hmm. Do what? I think so. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> I have one cousin that we don't know. I uh, mean, not who very she married. well. We have a guess who she married. I want to move to Minnesota just so we can maybe uh, meet her spouse. Because we know she got married in California, but there's no picture of who she married. <laughs> so we have no clue. But we think uh, we think all the same. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's it's very much like... And I have a gay cousin too. And I, But then again, your side of the family... Ugh. I mean... Ugh. Yeah. Or at least that particular side of your but, family... You know, for me, in a more most dr- direct sense, education has been so important. I, I didn't even think about pronouns, you know, proper pronouns until recently. Um, and it has been baffling. I, uh, I often refer to developers as they, especially if I don't know them that well and don't know what their pronouns are. Uh, if it's a developer I do know and I do know what their pronouns are, I will call them, you know... He, him, or if her, you know, she, her, whatever. But so, I will often refer to a developer as they. They is always a it's respectful. A, it's a respectful, full gender neutral, and I think I just did that instinctually, uh, especially once I started learning that pronouns were important. But you would not believe the amount of people that are trying to correct me, uh, that are trying to like go through and be like, "Why are you, you know, why are you calling them they? It's just one person." And it's a guy, and it's like, I, I try to explain, like, I use that because I don't know the developer, I don't know what their pronouns are, I don't know who they are, and they can be singular and plural. And, like, I've had a couple people bite back being like, well, that's stupid, it's a guy, therefore, just call him a him. And it's just like, but, like, I had tons of friends in college who, you know, post-graduation, they transitioned, and... I don't know. It just feels like it's easier to just go with, like, they? Even if, like, they're not gonna transition or do anything like that. But these are things that I never even thought about or knew about up until X number of years ago when it became public knowledge, common knowledge, and really, like, I'm not gonna say forced its way into community zeitgeist, but kinda did. I don't know. Educate the masses is mine. Yeah, I would say I would say education because like, local activism, great, very but important, very must be done. Right, but the thing is, you can't get the political influence or the local activism without educating the masses. Mm-hmm. True, Verona U is an up and coming institution. Maybe their journalism department needs a boost. Speaking of things that drain your finances, I know this is a little sudden. And don't read too much into it, but. Do you think you'll ever want a kid be a father to someone? Oh no, another topic. Ah. Oh gosh. Ah. Uh, it. I mean, realistically, we are not necessarily the character that he is asking. Like we. No, 
kind the of the avatar we control it's can just, have different it's preferences interesting from that us. it's interesting that he's asking this i mean i suppose it's good before people get into a relationship to ask these questions yeah because there are relationships that crumble when it's they, important yeah yeah so the thing is i'm curious as to why he's asking because I, we his father just disowned him yeah and took on another you know this other lady who worked for him as his heir instead so i don't know if is is his desire to have a child or the thing is he's not the question when someone asks you this I never know if it's because they want a child or because they don't want a child and want to see if it's important to you so that they know whether or not to lower their expectations or mm -hmm. to back off. But given the fact that, I mean, his father used him as an extension of himself and wanted him to carry on the Brooks name and whatnot. Yeah. The, the thing about children is I don't think enough people ask themselves why they want a children. Oh, uh, so well, say not not a children. Why I a, want a children? Uh, <laughs> I would like to have one children. <laughs> why, Stork, why they want a child? I uh, sorry yeah. sorry. I was about, I, I was going to say children like child children, but uh, because for many people it's just the. First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes so and so in the baby carriage, yeah. and it's just people so think, and so. Well, with, I'm hoping it's a baby. Well, the thing is, who I else are you gonna put in the baby I, carriage? I didn't have a name to just throw in there. Well, it's usually just the baby, a uh, baby in the baby carriage. Oh, really? I think that's the phrase. First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes a baby in the baby carriage. Oh, I thought that you always had to have a name. In there. I don't think so. Okay. I certainly never heard a name. Okay, fine. In, in any case, they... It's just the natural progression that people always assume is, you know, correct. What's going on? I just... There is uh, a flashing gif in the corner. Eh. And it's been bothering, <laughs> bothering me. And so the thing is, so often yeah. People have grown up with the expectation that that is the course of one's life, and that ultimately you're going to have children, and I mean, there's very much those a children are going to have imperative. children. There is a biological imperative, yes. But the thing is, are, there are the parents that have them because it's just expected. There are people that have them because they suck at birth control. <laughs> hey, I can say it. And then there's also, I mean, they, they, it's expected of them, as I think is the, yeah. the major one. Or it's just kind of the, the thing to do. I, and then there are, of course, I, people that, you know, would, you know, love to have children and live for children. And they really love the idea of, uh, the thing is, I, I'm just wondering about the, the motivation. Yeah. Is it is, is it an extension of yourself? Is it so, fun? Is it I think providing case, a life Isaac to a new probably, person? Isaac probably wants a kid, period. Uh, or, I mean, I think he could go either way. But the answer is, in this scenario, if he had a kid, I think what he'd want to do is specifically not repeat the mistakes as, that his father made. That I actually wonder about that specifically for people from uh, somewhat abusive familial situations you know I've seen a number of people and talked to a number of parents who had shitty parents like number of people who had very shitty parents and they're like when I have a kid I'm not going to be like them I'm going to break the cycle I'm going to be good to the kid supportive so on and so forth and you don't really get that from people that come from much more healthy family situations just because they don't have that background motivation I'm really curious about the prevalence of that specifically at the same time there are people that grew up in those situations and they say you know maybe i could provide a good life for kids but i'm damaged enough that well no 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 not necessarily that just that they realize that maybe their parents had them didn't have them for the right reasons and that they are uncertain themselves as to whether or not 
they need children in their own lives for for happiness yeah. and they don't want to jeopardize that. There's that I too. think that's a major thing for me. Mm -hmm. Because I I grew up that like, you know, those are the expectations, have a child. But as I get older, I wonder, you know, I feel like I, I personally have still so much growth left to do myself. And is it possible that having children would prevent me from achieving all many that I want to things. achieve? Probably. And so I think for many people, it's can children fit into your life and your lifestyle? And do you need children to feel fulfilled in your life? You understand what I mean? Yeah. Because the thing is, once you have them, you, you don't take that back. No. And you can't go back on that. You can you have to write it out for 18 years at least. Hopefully longer. Gosh, I went to a school with a couple of people, but as soon as they turned well, 18 and then went to college, their parents just were like just Bye. threw them out. Yeah. yeah I I I had some friends like that and it was absolutely terrible for them. Yeah. So I'm gonna go with probably not. Purely from the roleplay perspective of this guy raids dungeons. <laughs> like and probably will continue to raid dungeons like as from a protagonist perspective be pretty terrible if you know dad and dad went off into the dungeon and didn't come back mm -hmm. and so like from a character motivation perspective within this world i could see being very child diverse if you're in that kind of field mm -hmm. That's what I thought. But now this whole thing with Vincent has me thinking. Oh, he does want to be the better father. Parents have such power over their children. It's terrifying, but also such a gift. I didn't want any either, I thought. I worried I'd be as cruel as Vincent. I suppose we'll discuss it in the years to come, if things work out. Either way, I'm glad we'll have each other for support. This summer has been so chaotic. You have been a comforting constant, my rock. Never change. Never change, dude. He leans into you with a smile on his lips. You share a soft kiss, and you can sense an urgency, tensing his shoulders and hips. Let's go somewhere more private, shall we? Isaac leads you home to his penthouse suite. I'll open a bottle of Bordeaux. And I bought some incredible vegan chocolate you might like. Do you mind if I get a bit more comfortable? I like it out, everybody. I you could borrow. Everybody psychically knows we're vegan now. <laughs> Just because of that one barbecue. Yeah, I don't know if we've divulged that we're we, we that our really character is vegan in every. What is his name? Jonas. We only told Jonas. No, 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 no. There was also Sawyer. Oh. When we were cooking right, with right, them. You're right. I mean, not that it matters. With the cheese. Gosh. We should try and find some vegan chocolate. I thought we had. Did we? I mean, there's definitely been We've some been bits of it of in the ice chocolate. cream. Yeah, the ice cream was vegan and really good and <laughs> really terrible for us. Well, one of the two varieties yeah. that we tried. I, if any of you all see Brave Robot in the freezer section, it's real good, or at least the one that we tried. But it's, it's 70% like, of your daily value of saturated <laughs> it's fat. It's really fatty and sugary, and it's like, oh, okay. I guess I'm not going to buy... I, I will buy one pint of that stuff a month. If even. Mm. The avocado stuff, though. Like, avocado is really, like, started, uh, started to show up as, like, one of those, like, super items. Like, I spent this entire morning scrolling past avocado bed sheet and mattress fiber ads. Oh, oh, right. Well, didn't I talk to you about the pillows? Yeah. But except I think they were called avocados, but they're not actually made from avocados. I, they're made I, from an African tree yeah. fiber. But I, I'm going to say those, those av avocado uh, bed thing, that's like the first bit of advertising that I think has properly worked on me in a long time. Where I just <laughs> go buy an ad and I'm like, huh, an avocado set of sheets. Because I used to have bamboo sheets and those were really nice. It's like, what about avocado? <laughs> Only growing avocados was slightly more holistic. Yeah. There is a lot of exploitation that happens with that. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Uh, let uh, me just unbutton that. Uh, 
His eyes widen, but he smiles as he allows you to assist in disrobing. Oh gosh. You enjoy a quiet evening together. He is gently attentive from hilt to tip, pausing to gaze at you with adoration before each frenzy. Mm. Oh gosh. In the morning, he wakens you with, a gen with gentle kisses from your temple down your jaw to your shoulder. Good morning. And welcome to the rest of our lives. Well, assuming we can survive whatever's going on with Eric. I'm making eggs, if you'd like some. Breakfast. Breakfast! Two eggs coming up. I have crumpets here somewhere. And the kettle's already on. You share a cozy morning before heading home. You've reached maximum love level with Isaac. 